Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days and to this week's canning chat. I'm a hot mess. I apologize ahead of time. We were out bailing hay and uh, I got a face full of it. Yep. So I'm a little warm. I'm a little grimy. I'm a little gritty and we're going to get this canning chat going. Okay. We've got seven pages of questions here. Let's get started. Remember, if you have a question, Drop it in the comments section below. If it's something that needs an immediate answer, please email me at my email address, which is listed in the description box below. Whew. Okay, so Amy Rankin. I keep hearing, not just from you, if the lid's sealed, you're good. Could a canned jar of food with a sealed lid still have botulism? Absolutely, if you canned it improperly. Yep. Um, Bella Southward. When I first started pressure canning, I unknowingly did some rebel canning with beans. I put dried kidney beans in pint jars. I have recently learned that kidney beans must be soaked and the water discarded because they have a toxin. So, should I discard these beans? I don't want to make anyone sick. Um, when in doubt, throw them out. I have heard of the red bean toxin thing, um, and it seems to be extremely valid. So, um, yeah, I you know, that's why beans are a great starting project, because they're cheap. Um, Reed makes... Oh my lord, I never do anything but rinse my canner. I'll start adding soap. Why is it so important to have it totally dry? The growth of mold. I always let mine dry thoroughly, but I always wondered. Well, it's metal and water, and the two don't mix well. You know, stuff tends to degrade, so it's best just to get it out. And because it does get rank smelling, you know, like in a bucket if you leave water in a closed bucket. You know, that kind of thing. So, oh, yeah. Um, Diva Geneva. First, uh, two questions. First, how do you remove the discoloration from the aluminum canner? The best suggestion I have is Barkeeper's Friend. Um, and if that doesn't work, enjoy the beauty of it. It means it's well-worked piece of equipment. Um, can you discuss the use of Pomona pectin versus balls, real fruit, low or no sugar pectin? Do they work? And if so, which seems to work better? I love Pomona's pectin. I do. To me, it it always sets. I've never had an off taste, which I've seen a couple of comments. If you hear chewing, it's because the dog's got her chew toy. Um, so I really love Pomona's pectin, um, and that's that's the one that I would use. <clears throat> Let's see, Pine Country Homestead. I recently canned some raw packed chicken, and after about six hours, one of the pint jars had not sealed. Um, I decided to just put that jar in the refrigerator because I wasn't sure if it was safe to leave it out or not. Um, was this the right thing to do um, or leave it out for 24 hours to see if the jar is sealed? Honestly, typically within six hours, if it's not sealed, my bet is it's not going to. Okay, so yeah, you're fine. Absolutely. Now, if it's been half an hour or an hour, um, then no, don't. Um, you know, you have up to 24 hours in order to make that determination. Um, and once they go in the fridge, you can't, you know, even if they did seal, they're not shelf stable at that point. So you've, you've changed You've changed it. Um, so, yeah. But after six hours, I know whether or not they've sealed. Uh, Christina McKee. Um, let's see. I've just canned potatoes for the very first time this week. I'm concerned, though, because I was washing the jars. I noticed in one jar some small bubbles on the surface, and another looks like some large air pockets between the product. And in some jars, the potatoes are stuck to the lid. I also noticed that not as much liquid was left in some jars. Okay, so <clears throat> she followed everything to a T, blah, blah, blah. Uh, note the bubbles are not rising from the bottom. They are just on the bottom on top of the rim. Okay, so um, just like any liquid, there's going to be some kind of bubbles. I'm so warm, my glasses are steaming. Um, there's going to be some kind of bubbles, you know, so you're fine. You really are. Um, the ones that are stuck to the lid, shake the jar. See if they come loose. Not a big deal. Um, and potatoes, <clears throat> pardon me, potatoes tend to absorb some of that liquid. Um, so that's perfectly normal, and your jars sound like they are perfectly good. Um, Osnat Laster, I have an important question. I preserve tomato sauce from canned tomatoes and seasoned with dry spices like parsley, oregano, and more. I did everything according to all the rules and even extended the canning time by five minutes to be safe. The jars are all sealed. My question is whether it's permissible to use dry spices in canning. Absolutely. Absolutely, you can add dry spices to any of your canning if that is your desire. Remember that when you pressure can um, certain things that the, like if you put it in with your meat, the flavor can intensify, you know, so you don't want to be heavy handed with them um, because in that cooking process, they will intensify and don't use sage because sage can get 
bitter. Sage? Basil, sage. Sage. I think it's sage. Um, Danelle Cullen, can you recommend the diffuser for canning on a propane stove outside? I can't, um, except that I know um, some of our moderators in our Facebook group uh, were discussing it one day, and they were talking about using a cast iron pan or griddle um, as a diffuser, and that it worked. So you could give that a try. <clears throat> Let's see, Robin Miller. So I tried to can apples. Oh my gosh, I canned them in my electric water bath canner. All of a sudden I hear rattling. I went to look and all of my jars were floating and I had a lot of siphoning. A couple jars, a couple of the jars are dry with no liquid. Think it will be okay and what the heck happened? Okay, so dry with no liquid? No, they're not good. Um, and apples have a lot of air in them, but to have that much siphoning, <clears throat> I honestly don't know, I, you know, without being there, I can't say for sure what happened. Um, something went awry, though. And I am not familiar with an electric water bath canner. I don't have one. Um, so, if you had an inch of water over all the jars, I mean, they, yeah, some, something's not right. So, were the lids not screwed on tight enough, or were, <clears> hmm, <throat> I don't know, and I'm very sorry. Um, but the ones that are dry with no liquid, not good. No. <clears throat> Wish I had a better answer for you. That is peculiar. This is why I like manual stuff. Okay. So, uh, Becca Beck 152, I canned beef stew but realized it wasn't hot when I jarred it, but not until I finished the 90 minutes. Will it be okay? It was cold packed. Yes, that's, you raw packed it. It's perfectly fine. Absolutely fine. Great job. Congratulations. You got this. Unique River. Hi, Lisa. I'm Katie, and I've been canning for a few years. I learned from my mother-in-law. I would like to do more, but I feel like I need a canning book to be safe. What canning book or books would you recommend? The first one that I would recommend is the um, all, uh, all About Canning from the National Center of Home Food Preservation, and I can't remember the exact name, but I'm going to put a link down below to my Amazon store with all of my canning-related stuff, and in that store um, are five books. They are my top pick five books, okay? Um, especially if you're just starting out, super safe. Um, two of them are actually not canning books. They're more for putting food by, um, but they do have some canning information in them, so I really like them. But those are the five that I would recommend for beginners, okay? Um, so check the link down below for my canning storefront. Uh, Debbie Bishop, just missed asking a question from your last chat. So my question is, I pressure canned raw tomatoes last week and I forgot to add the citric acid. What should I do with the cans now? Um, are they okay for the shelf? Should I recan them? Should I throw them out? And I hate telling you to throw out food, okay? But now um, it's been two weeks, you know, if my math is right, and I'm going to say that they're not safe. <clears throat> Pardon me. There is, um, don't inhale hay. It's really bad. But, um... There are going to be people that say reprocess. So, you know, in the comments, I am certain that there are. So you're going to have to make a decision for you and yours. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the acid really is necessary anymore with today's tomatoes. And uh, they're just not acidic anymore because everybody likes sweeter tomatoes. And so they've bred the tomatoes to be sweeter. And that's why they're not as acidic. Um, but somebody in the comment section, I'm sure, is going to, uh, you know, tell you to go ahead um, so I'm going to say it's up to you. I definitely would not leave them as they are. Uh, but my best advice would be, yeah, you're going to have to replace them. Deborah Arrington, my friend. Um, I'm confused. We take such pains to make sure that the rims are free of fats and debris, yet with siphoning the, products, siphoning, the product has to go over the rim, and yet the jars usually seal with siphoning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> siphoning is not the desired effect. Siphoning does happen. Um, and siphoning can cause seals to fail, okay? Um, not and not immediately, but later on. So if you have a whole bunch of siphoning, that could be an issue, you know? Um, because that is something in between the, the rim and the lid. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if it seals, it's good until it becomes unsealed. And it has a larger chance of that happening if it's siphoned. Joanne Keith. Um, weird question. When I wash my jars the next day, as I wash my water... As my wash water rises to over the tops of the jars, almost all of the jars will stay at the bottom. First, don't 
have them go over the tops of the jars. Um, and But some of them will bob a bit. Um, everyone's sealed well and can be picked up by the lids. Should I be concerned? No, don't be concerned. Um, that's normal. You're submerging them. So don't submerge them. Um, you know, take the, you know, fill the sink with water. Fill the sink with water. Put the jars in, okay? And then bring water up to like, you know, the neck of the jar. And <clears throat> then wash them off. Use a washcloth, wash everything off, but you're not submerging them. So you shouldn't submerge them, um, but you're fine. Um, Susie Neal. Hay is no joke, okay? Um, Susie Neal, can you pressure can the same... Can you pressure can at the same time two different items as long as the canning time is the same? Absolutely you can, yes. Um, vertically challenged Nana. I was wondering about pork stock broth. I don't see it mentioned on the National Center for Home Food Preservation. I was looking to make some pork stock from some pork butt bones, but there's no mention. Would it be the same as beef? That's what I do. Same as beef, yes. Um, Chris Marie. I just canned for the first time in my Instant Pot Max. I can chicken and beef. I am satisfied that I followed the directions to the letter. Is it normal for some moisture to be under the ring when removed? Also, one of my beef jars popped before taking it out of the canner. Is that one okay? <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, if you're waiting 24 hours to pull off the rings, um, there may be some, there may be some liquid underneath it. It, it could be normal. I've, I've honestly never paid attention. And as far as popped, you mean pinging, sealed? Yes, that's normal uh, for when you're canning. I mean, I've had them, I've had them sealed before I pulled them out too, uh, but not from that kind of canner. Okay, uh, lock in acres. Can I can cauliflower, broccoli, or Brussels sprouts without pickling them? No. Um, can I can fresh spinach? Absolutely. Check out the National Center for Home Food Preservation. Um, Debbie Andrews, I have a question about pork loin. Costco has them on sale this week, so I would like to try bottling it. Can I can it like I do ugly chicken raw pack in jars? Absolutely. <clears throat> ugly chicken uh, was named ugly chicken. I, um, I, I have always canned my chicken, uh, you know, raw pack. And I remember years ago, people giving comments about, oh, it's just so ugly. I can't stand it. It's just so ugly. Right. And so I started calling it ugly chicken. Um, so I'm sorry guys, but, um, you know, if you're wondering where ugly chicken came from, it came from me. I started calling it that. And, um, you know, it's because people were always saying it's so ugly. Well, it's supposed to be ugly, but it tastes really good. Okay. So it's ugly chicken, ugly pork, ugly beef, you know, whatever you raw pack is probably going to be ugly. Um, but yes, you would can it the same way raw pack. It'd be awesome. Uh, pork loin can tend to be a little bit drier than pork butt because pork butt has a little more fat marbled in there, but <clears throat> it's really handy to have around. So good luck. You got this. And Phyllis McCall. I have a question about blanching. You put your veggies in boiling water. When do you start your two minutes? When it starts boiling again or right after you put the veggies in? Right after you put the veggies in. Linda Horton. If the Pomona was bought years ago and then used for canning, could it be that it was old and lost its taste? No. Um, Pomona um, has a really good shelf life. A really good shelf life. I've used five-year-old Pomona and not had a problem. So, yeah, it's... I, I have no idea what that could be. It's very odd. I, we've now had, I think, three people comment that they ran into that taste issue. Uh, Patty Coach. Um, I always make cranberry sauce and freeze it. This year I want to can it. My question is, I use orange juice instead of the water, so is it safe to use? Sometimes I will use apple juice. Yes, it is. You're good to go. Um, Maxine T. I pickled beets and debubbled them after processing in my hot water bath canner. Um, I noted that some of the jars have bubbles. Also, some of the beets are against the side of the jar, and it looks like a bubble between the beet and the jar. Do I need to throw it out? Don't throw it out! Little bubbles are normal. Little bubbles are normal. So you're, you're perfectly fine. You're good. Bubbles are not deadly. Uh, lemon crinkles. Steph. Okay. Um, <clears throat> a lot of Sutton's Dazers are homeowners and can dispose of spoiled foods somewhere on their property. As a renter with no outside access to bury contaminated food, what does one do? Treat it like regular garbage? Um, you can, and just be cautious, you know, about not hovering over it or inhaling, you know. Um, but I have also found that flushing it works really good. Yeah. And then it just goes down in the sewer system. Life's beautiful. Good question, Steph. Um, Stacy Crowder. 
Can you can the half gallon mason jars? Like canning chili or beef stew or soups? No. Okay. Half gallon jars are only for water bathing juices, um, canning up water, okay, emergency water, or dry storage. That's it. Uh, Gypsy White, or Jippy White, Jippy White. I tried to give you an S, I'm sorry. Or Gippy White? Gippy White? I don't know. Um, I am looking to can green beans in individual portions. I have small four ounce jars, and everyone I've seen who can green beans usually pack them willy nilly. Since I'm using such small jars, can I pack them tightly and vertically like pickled spears as long as the headspace is still good, or do they have to be loosely packed? You're good. Stack them in there any way you can. You're awesome. Just don't forget to add the liquid. The liquid is imperative, okay? Um, Mary Ann Beyer, I canned apple pie filling yesterday and had trouble with the jar sealing. I used clear gel and left an inch headspace, but evidently that wasn't enough. The filling swelled up right to the inside of the lid. Am I crazy or not? You're not crazy. You're not crazy, Marianne. You got this. Um, pie filling, by its very nature, swells. And I don't know why they don't change the headspace on this. Seriously, it should be like one and a half inches um, because it's going to swell. That's It's just a given. And apples have a lot of air in them, and so they're going to go up too. So you're not crazy. You're good. Congratulations. Next time, if you want to do it, increase that headspace a little bit. Um, Barbie P says, I need to purchase a new canner, and I saw a Presto 23-quart induction canner. Are they okay to use? Yes. Um, do you have an induction stove? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if an induction canner will work on a normal stove. Um, but you don't need, if you don't need an induction canner, then a regular 23 quart is, you know, fine. You don't need it. Um, so if you check out that same link that I've got below for my canning store, um, there, there's the induction canner and there's the regular and there's a 16 quart and there's an all American. Um, but check that out. But, uh, yeah, they're okay to use. I just don't know if you can use it on a regular gas or electric stove. You know what I mean? Um, so depending on your situation, you might be better off with just a regular 23 quart Presto and you save a couple bucks. CC December, 2018, I canned potatoes, my very first batch, which I have been using. When I pulled the last jar I used, when I opened the jar, it had a good seal, but I found two black spots on the inside of the lid. Okay, so, no, don't throw away the potatoes. Don't throw away the rest of the potatoes. Black spots are normal on the inside of the lid, okay? Um, and uh, it's, it's a compound from the food during the canning process, okay? So you are good. Don't worry about it. What did I do here? Okay. Um, Ross N. says... We bought 100 pounds of carrots on sale. We skimmed them, washed them, put them in quart jars with a teaspoon of salt. We steam canned them for 30 minutes. Now I'm wondering if you can do that. No, you can't. No, you can't. Um, they have to be pressure canned. You're going to have to throw them out. And I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, 100 pounds of carrots, I get it. I absolutely get it. Um, no, they have to be pressure canned. Unless you're pickling them and you didn't pickle them. Um, so I'm very sorry. Um, yeah, it's always good as a refresher before you start any, any canning process to look it up on the, um, National Center for Home Food Preservation, just to double check. Um, I can barely remember where I put my keys or my phone most days. So, you know, I'm not going to remember all this stuff and, and for safety's sake, I check everything before I do it again. So I'm sorry. Yeah, they got to go. They got to go. Uh, Sarah Canetto, Canet, Canet, Can, Contento. Ha! There you go. Gotcha. Um, I was watching a YouTube video and she has, and she was canning a tomato based product with bell peppers and onions. She put it in the water bath for two minutes, 20 minutes. I was freaking out inside my head because I was under the impression that the onion especially had to be pressure canned. Am I mistaken? Uh, yeah, you're, uh, you know, to the best of my knowledge, you are correct. Also, what do you think about using a one-piece lid? They're not, uh, they're not highly approved at this point um, in the U.S., and I, it's a risk I'm not willing to go with, you know, and they're more expensive. Um, but without totally knowing what she was making, I'm going to say, uh, yeah, that something's not, something's not right there, okay? Uh, T. Kinsey Art, I understand that bacon isn't approved for canning, but I thought I read somewhere that meats added to foods are safe if below a certain percentage of solid contents like five to 10. I'm concerned about adding one or two pieces of bacon 
and pork and beans or ham and beans, what is correct? Um, I guess it depends on what you're going to put them in. If you're going to put bacon in with green beans, um, then no, because you're not going to be canning it for the proper time, okay? If you're going to put bacon in with your, uh, with your, you know, regular beans, like pork and beans, that kind of thing, um, then yeah, you're good because you're canning it at, you're canning it at the meat time. Um, and because it is a very minimal amount, so you'll be fine. Uh, not highly approved by any stretch. Um, cook the bacon first. Try to render off as much of that fat as you can. Okay. Uh, Lucy Thomas, I canned soups and all turned out delicious, but when I removed them from the canner, some were boiling inside the jar and one was not. Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. Um, sometimes they don't boil. Now, common rule of thumb that a lot of my viewers brought to my attention is if it's not bubbling when you take it out, there's a good chance that it is not going to seal. Um, so if it's sealed, then you're fine. Um, if it didn't seal, then, you know, you know the rest. Put it in the fridge, eat it within a, you know, a few days. But, um... I don't always count on the boiling to tell me whether or not it's going to seal because I've had non-boiling ones seal. But a lot of people, you know, kind of look at it and they that draws their attention. So they move it to the front so that they can keep an eye on it and check it to make sure that it's sealed. Uh, Lakeside Homestead. I have a Presto 23 quart canner with a, the gauge. It also came with a weight that is 15 pounds. That's the regulator. Um, I get it checked at my local extension, but would like to have a 10 pound weight to ensure that I'm at the right pressure. And that's the, that's the weighted regulator, okay? Uh, would any 10-pound weight that fits a Presto canner work? No. So the uh, model of your canner, if you go to the link below for the jiggler, okay, and in that description it'll tell you, <clears throat> pardon me, what canners it will work for. If you do not see your model number listed there, then call Presto and talk to them, and they will direct you in the right, uh, in the right way, okay? Um, Marcy Moore, Lisa, do you think it's possible to can on a campfire or a rocket stove? I seem to recall Jay Null doing this in an old video, and I seem to recall he did too, but I don't remember what his results were. I know that you're going to have to babysit that thing like you've never babysit a canner in your life, right? Because it's um, not meant to, he to heat for longevity. It's meant to heat long enough to cook something up. You know, it, it's a very small fuel source. So um, I think that it would be worth uh, a try, but I'm not sure that it would be something that can be done. Because uh, the minute that comes down, the minute, I, I think you're risking a lot, you know. But it would be a fun experiment to do with something, you know, like beans or water or something like that. Um, I'm going to have to go look for that video now. I miss his videos. Um, hi, Lisa. Jill Rife says, Hi, Lisa. First time uh, raw packing chicken. Breasts with some boneless thighs. Canned per regulation, 75 minutes. Sealed, but really no liquid. Some gel boiled one in, boiled in jar one hour after removing from the canner. Safe. Yes, on all counts. Absolutely fine. Perfectly safe. Enjoy it. You got it. Uh, Donna Job, can I season potatoes before as I'm canning? Do they have to be plain? They do not have to be plain, but um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, go lightly because they can intensify during the canning process. Karen G, last question of the night, you guys. Um, I made a batch of cowboy candy with 4% cider, not 5 Realizing after I canned, is the cowboy candy unsafe to eat? Yes, it is unsafe to eat. You're... Uh, vinegar needs to be 5%. Check all your vinegar when you buy it. Only buy 5%. Um, just to make sure you're safe. But yeah, no, 4%, no good. Okay, you guys, I have to go. I have to go take a shower because I'm so itchy. I'm driving myself crazy right now. I got to get this stuff off of me. But I wanted to get this canning chat up for you. And I hope that you are all having a stupendous week, okay? Um, remember, if you have any questions, toss them in the comment section below. Please check out my other canning chats. Um, because there's a dime to dollar that I have answered your question. If not, toss it in the comment section below. If you have an emergency canning question, be, sh be sure to email me. However, remember, I do sleep and I do work. And so I will get to it as quickly as possible. Have a super great night. And I will catch up with you guys later. Bye. Be safe.